Kostokon here, and today I will be sharing with you how to play the Warriors of Chaos. The Warriors of Chaos can be a lot of fun to play, especially if you like aggressive expansion and insanely powerful melee units. Going from Warhammer 2, the Warriors of Chaos are no longer a horde faction, but instead settled in a similar but more interesting way than that of the Wood Elves. All throughout the map you will find specific settlements you can occupy as Dark Fortresses. These fortresses are similar to regular tier 5 settlements you would be able to build up for any other race. But they are a lot more valuable as they provide you with a massive amount of income and are fairly defendable. They are also the only way you have of increasing your hero's capacity. Every other settlement you will be able to occupy only as tier 1 settlements that provide you with next to no benefits save for some local bonuses. What makes their minor settlements worth having is if they can provide you with a resource building. Every resource gives you some unique bonuses. For example, building up a timber resource building gives all of your marauder horsemen extra ammunition. Or building up gems increases your army's wins of magic capacity by one. I mean, it's still better than 10% power increase when increasing, but still, could we get at least three? If you were to ask me which resources I thought were best, these would probably be my favorites. Marble, salt, wine, furs, iron, spices, pastures and wood. Now, unlike most other races, their recruitment isn't tied to their buildings. Instead, you are able to recruit units anywhere on the map instantly, so long as they are available in that region. This is the exact same as how Draika is able to summon forest spirits, or how the Vampire Counts and Vampire Coast are able to raise the dead, where every province has certain units available to recruit, and those units have a percentage chance of replenishing each turn. The amount, type, and quality of units you have available to summon will depend on the corruption level and the type of the corruption present in that province, by the terrain, as well as by your buildings. The higher the corruption, the more units and better quality units you will be able to recruit. Some of your buildings also enable the province to have certain units available for you to recruit or increase the capacity of other units that province has available. If you are in mountainous regions, the province will have a chance of having dragon ogres or giants for you to recruit. And if there is say corn corruption in the province, you will be able to recruit corn units. This makes it so you're always on the move and never have to wait for your units to be recruited. Something that also sets the Warriors of Chaos apart from other factions is their warband system. This makes it so you're able to upgrade your units to the next tier of that unit type in exchange for some of their experience and a bit of dark favor. In order to upgrade your units to the next tier, you also have to research the technologies which allow them to do so. I believe this is probably the best system that has been introduced in the game so far, and I would really like to see it added to other races as well. Just don't downgrade aspiring champions into Chaos Spawn. I don't even understand why that is an option. As a side note, training has been massively buffed in the recent patches, where it now provides you with a percentage increase in experience gained for all your units. This is extremely powerful for the Warriors of Chaos, as it means you'll be able to upgrade your units much sooner, especially since Exalted Heroes can increase your experience gain by up to 70%. The Warriors of Chaos also have a unique resource in the form of souls. You gain souls from fighting battles against any factions that aren't demonic factions, post-battle loot options, as well as from raising settlements. You are able to spend souls in a few different ways, either by activating gifts from the Chaos Gods, by dedicating your heroes and lords to a specific Chaos God, or have your lords ascend and become demon princes. There isn't much I can tell you about the Chaos God's gifts. You have a limited number of gift slots in which you can activate the boons you like. Depending on which faction you start off as, you will either have a wide range of different gift slots, such as two for each of the Chaos Gods, or just four for one of the Chaos Gods. In order to activate a gift, you have to pay a cost and souls for it to activate, and afterwards you have to pay an upkeep cost and souls as well, in order to keep the bonuses that gift provides you. In order to unlock higher tier gifts, you will have to spend a certain amount of souls through activating and having gifts active for a certain Chaos God. 
or undivided. There isn't a definitive answer as to which Chaos Gods have the best gifts, but I would have to say that the ones I find to be most useful are located amongst the Slanesh and Nurgle gifts, as they have the biggest impact on your campaign as a whole with the Endless March gift for Slanesh, Bloom of Decay and Deadly Transmissions with Nurgle. I would also advise you not to spend souls on getting units, as in my view it just isn't worth it. When it comes to building your armies, you can really go whichever way you want. Unless you are playing a faction that is focused around a single god, in which case you only have two options. You can build armies focused around corn units, armies that have corn units and some Nurgle love to heal them. You can build any type of army you want really, but you just have to be careful about your army authority. Army authority determines the upkeep cost, recruit cost and replenishment rate of your units dependent on their devotion. If your army has little corn authority, you're not pleasing the blood god enough. As such, all of your corn units will be more expensive to maintain and will take longer to replenish. On the other hand, if you have high corn authority, you are making the blood god pleased and your army is promptly rewarded. Raising your authority depends on which heroes you embed into your armies and the lord leading it. If an undivided lord is leading your army, that army will have high undivided authority. And if you then embed an exalted hero of corn into it, that army will also get corn authority, but Slanesh authority will be decreased by your corn character making Slanesh Harlots unwelcome in that army. So just remember to keep in mind your authority when you are deciding on which units you want to recruit and keep in your armies. As the Warriors of Chaos, you're also able to vassalize any faction in the game. Well, except for Setra the unvassalizable, as well as Daniel the Demon Prince for whatever reason. You vassalize some Norskin factions by simply occupying the Dark Fortresses and every other faction by getting them down to their last settlement, attacking it and then you will get the option to vassalize them. Having vassals can be both fun and completely worthless. You will be able to borrow their armies and use them to expand faster or you can try stealing some of their heroes. You can also recruit some ally units, which makes it so you can create some monstrosities of mismatched armies. The only issue is that most of the time your vassals will just sit in their settlements doing nothing whatsoever. In my experience, I very rarely had vassals break off and declare war on me. Usually with order factions I vassalized or major factions. So do be careful about who you make into your vassals. When it comes to confederating with other Warriors of Chaos legendary lords, you can only do so with Archeon and Belakor. And honestly not in an enjoyable way. You have to attack the final settlement of another Warriors of Chaos faction, where after you win, you will get the option to confederate them. So how do you go about playing your campaign? Well, you just be as aggressive as you can. As the Warriors of Chaos, you don't have to wait for your units to be recruited. So you can always be on the move and fight as many battles as you want. Capturing Dark Fortresses shouldn't really be a major priority if they are too far out of your way. Especially if it's the early game where you won't even have the money to upgrade them. Just fight as many battles as you can, gather as much dark favor as you can and as many souls as you can. Always try to keep on the move and don't worry too much about losing minor settlements. Even though you shouldn't care about them, do try to occupy and keep settlements where you can build a resource building as they can heavily augment your campaign. Finally, as for whom I think the best Warriors of Chaos Legendary Lords to play is, it would have to be Belakor. And unlike the other factions, he is free to play. He can turn mortal generic lords into undivided demon princes after you beat them in battle or use a hero action against them. So make sure you keep an enemy lord alive after winning battles against them. Belakor also starts his campaign with four different gift slots for each of the Chaos Gods already unlocked, so you can use their gifts much sooner. Not only this, but Belakor also gets his unique version of the Unholy Manifestations, which additionally augment his campaign and make it all the more fun. My favorite of which is the Zinch Manifestation, where you can spawn your own rift in any province on the map, which you can then use to traverse the map and do a little bit of mischief. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe for future content. Thank you all for watching and until next time. Cold Spore fights as one.